for today's video recording. We're going to work on this book, which is a combination of books made by um, The Paper Addiction on YouTube and Kasha's Designs on YouTube, with my own spin on it, of course. Because, why not? <laughs> it's my running theme on life, right? Um, I started with a file folder version of it, which is what they both did. Um, I wanted to do it with cardstock. This has... Oh, they're... I don't know if you can see this really good. They're shaped like little file folders. Right here, and right here, and right here. And then in between them, it has a signature of paper. So just plain paper. Um, in this case, I used cardstock because I figured it was for pictures and you needed something a little sturdier. This one is decorated as a Halloween one. See the skulls? <laughs> uh, it's not done by any means, but I figured I could get enough of it done to give you an idea of what it looks like, and then from there, you know, you can whip up your own version of it if you wanted to. Um, it's not that hard. It actually is doesn't take too much time, and I made that ribbon way too long on there. I can wrap it around like four times. So I'll set that aside, and I'm going to pause this for a second to adjust this camera, and then I will be right back. Alright, I'm back. Um, be warned, I'm kind of doing this from my chicken scratch notes. Chicken scratch notes. So I may have a little bit of a mess up here and there, and just bear with me, we'll fix it. I already made one. I think I can handle another. <laughs> Put that aside, too. Okay. I am using Graphic 45's Twas the Night Before Christmas. I'm going to do a Christmas album. Um, I've never done this type of an album. In a Christmas album, I've only done the one Halloween one. That is it. And the uh, file folder version of it as well. Um, so we shall see. I'm... I'm <laughs> Me and Christmas things are not turning out to be so friendly, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. I'm going to do the base colors in green, this green cardstock. It's a really uh, dark pine green type of color. And then the tags and whatnot are going to be done in the red, this red. So, um, <laughs> that doesn't belong in there. Totally different colors for a whole different project. Alright, so I need to cut several pieces of paper, and let's see, the cover is a combination of two sheets of paper to equal 17 and 9 sixteenths long. Of course, you can adjust any of these measurements to whatever size you want, anytime. Um, they are then scored at two and a half, three, eight and a half, nine and a half, or eight and an eighth, nine and a half, thirteen and and a half and sixteen. It, once it's seven, seventeen and nine sixteenths. Obviously, we're using cardstock, so we're going to have to uh, cut and score a little bit differently to make that measurement. That would be if you were using the um, file folders, because the way they fold out, they make enough space. All right. So let me set everything but these two papers aside. All that garbage in our way. Um, sorry if I hit the camera. I've got a lot of stuff on my desk still. Always. There's always something. This is a little uh, tattoo gun that necklace that a friend of mine bought me. <laughs> I'm going to use it as a keychain. It's rather big. Alright, so put these back here so they're out of the way. That real. Hold on. They're rolling up the wrong direction. Alright. So, cutter. Sorry for the shadow. It's a new uh, video set up for me. I'm not quite sure what to do just yet to change that. I think I might have to move my light. Like, move it, move it. So, first cut is going to be six and a half by twelve. So we'll just cut it at six and a half. Sorry, I'm on a screen. 
set that aside. And then the second is going to be six and a half by eight and a quarter. Okay. So six and a half. And then eight and a quarter. Double check. That's why I double check. It's eight and an eighth, not eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter wouldn't really harm anything. It just makes the flap a little bit longer. The whole eighth of an inch longer. Really not going to hurt anything. Alright. So, so, then we need the scoreboard. That's over here. Tight squeeze between the legs of this thing. I'm going to have to put it up higher so I can get more of the desk, I think. Uh, for now, I hope this works for you guys. That's all I got. Let me move it forward. Sorry for the jiggle. I'll warn you ahead of time. Make sure I'm not on the edge here. No, nope, we're good. That should stay where I put it, hopefully. Doesn't help the lighting, but it does help that you can see. Alright, so on the long piece, the 6.5 by 12 inch piece, you're going to score at 1 and 3 quarters. This is your spine, your back, and your uh, flap. No, what do we got here? <laughs> this, these two pieces are a pocket. That's your spine. This makes a pocket when attached to the flap part. Wow. You'll see. Alright, and for the short piece, you're going to score at five and an eighth, five and a quarter, five and three eighths, five and a half, and five and five eighths. That makes the flap have a bend to it, but not uh, just one single crease. Um, you can do that wider if you want to, you can do it less if you want to, but I would go wider toward the flap. So if you're going to go, you're going to keep going. So instead of stopping at five and uh, seven eighths, you're going to go to yeah, five and five eighths anyway, you're going to go right to five and a quarter, five and seven eighths, and then six or whatever, that way. Uh, that'll make the flap shorter, but it'll make this, this fold part here wider, so you have more room to breathe. Um, it's totally up to you if you want to do that or not. You need this to be five and an eighth, or it's not going to match the front cover. This is the back side. Okay, so five and eight. No, it's not five and eight. Interesting. But trust me, you have to do it that way because their tabs on the folders meet right up to the edge of this. So do as I say, not as I question myself. <laughs> Alright, get that out of the way. And then you end up with this. This overlaps here. Sorry for the lighting, that's so terrible. Um, this actually, hold on, you want to flip it so that your bump part of your score line is facing up. And that'll be the inside. And then this goes on top like that to make a pocket on the back. Okay, so then you have a pocket here. Uh, that, on the Halloween one, I attached using uh, uh, a hinge type of thing, like an uh, inch wide by yay long piece of paper that I put tape on, and I'll show you that in just a second here. So I need to make two of those. I don't close off the bottom because when you cover the spine, it automatically closes it off. You can if you want to. It does not matter. Not that I've seen anyway. Oh, and now the purr machine's here. Here. Here, 
Show yourself. Show yourself, Prime Machine. Look up here. Hey, look up. Look up. Get in. Look up. Look right here. What's that? Oh no, something to play with. Get up there. The kitten likes to perch himself on my shoulders. He thinks he's a parrot. Alright, so the strips need to be two and three eighths long by an inch wide. And I need two of them. So So off screen, I apologize. Alright, I'm going to pause here and raise the camera and see if that helps any of this getting me more on screen. Alright, that looks like it should be much better. I'm running around in my robe because it's freezing in here. I know it shouldn't be, but it is. I caused myself an avalanche of everything when I moved this, so got a bigger mess over here than we had a minute ago. Just ignore all the stuff on the side. Alright, so I need to score these in half. Again, these need to be flipped over so that the uh, uh, line side, the side with the hill on it, needs to be facing up. That'll be the inside. When you fold it, you're supposed to fold it toward the, the bubble part of it. So if your indent is on this side, you have the pushed out part on that side, that's the part you're supposed to fold toward. It's, I don't know why, it's just the way it's supposed to be. The other way works for you better, go with it. I am not particular. <laughs> and I am not one to judge. Alright. I hope you guys can hear this okay. The camera's kind of far away from me now. Just line this up along the outer edge. And tear it off. Up along that edge and tear it up and repeat. Might stuck under there because I'm wearing my robe. My robe collects lint. actually cheap ones that I bought at Ali's. It's like a bargain outlet type store. So you're going to fold them in half and notch your corners. Like that. And do both ends. This makes for less bulk when you're adding on all of your decorative papers. And then you can still have the hinge to make the pocket fully usable. Some people like to glue the edges of the hinge down, which I believe is what the girl in the videos, the girls in the videos both did. 
Um, I like to do it this way, that then you're not losing space. So, so you take this, and I turn it around the wrong way. Okay, so make sure you're on the right, in the right direction, so that your pocket end is on this end. And you're going to add these like this on each side. Okay. And again, make sure that your inside is facing up. I just cut my nails off, so I'm having a heck of a time getting this tape backing off. The chemo that I was doing is making my nails peel, so I'm losing my nails. are going to fall off at some point in the near future. So I figured I should cut them down and instead of potentially ripping them off, because we all know that would hurt. Alright, so we're going to line this up to the top edge of the pocket. Stick it down. Should not have taken the tape off both sides of that, but that's okay. Run with it while it's working. <laughs> I hope you guys can hear this getting burned in my ear. Sounds like a machine gun. It's perched on my shoulder like a parrot. bottom corner is no big deal. If a little bit of it is not sealed down, it's not going to hurt anything. Alright, so now you're going to flip it face inside facing down. Ridges facing that way to the right. <laughs> I don't know to think about that. And line up the this piece with the score mark on this piece making sure you're just to the right of it, and then stick them down. Trying not to move the paper while you do it. Alright, like that. And you'll have a hole here and a hole here that goes all the way through. Okay, so that will be dealt with when you do the spine cover on the back here, because that'll close that pocket. If you want, you can do a thin bead of glue across the inside of the bottom there and glue it down. It is totally up to you. Um, I think I might just to keep it from being too unruly while I'm trying to show you what to do here. This is uh, Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. And you're just going to do a very thin bead all the way along the edge. And when you squish it down, squish it toward the rest of the spine so that it doesn't get all over the inside of the pocket. Okay? So it'll come out this side, not that side. Don't worry about it making a mess because you're going to cover it anyway. Alright. Let that dry for a minute. On mine, I only rounded the edges of the flap. You can round the edges of the whole thing if you want to. Um, just remember that this is going to be a pocket down here. I'll show you real quick here. Right. This you have this way. So you fold it on the second score line inward toward the inside of the book. And then on the first score line, you're going to fold backwards toward the outside of the book. Okay. Then you have your spine here. So you fold it up. And then up again. That's your third and your fourth score on the first piece. And then your last scores are the five that are right next to each other on the flap. So you fold those one at a time. Just making sure they're nice and neat. If you need help, you can always grab a ruler or a straight edge of some sort. 
so that it folds on the next one because it's sometimes when they're really close like that it's hard to get them to cooperate. So I usually use the back side of my ruler and hope for the best. Alright, so they don't have to be perfect scores, you know, they just have to be bent in order to give this some movement, some flexibility, I guess. Be the word I want. And just keep working it until it's all fold it forward the way you want it. Alright, that's all of them. And that makes it rounded. This way. See, it's rounded. And that way, when you fold the whole thing up, this has room to give. You know, so you can hopefully, you know, have room to uh, expand. And as I was saying, you see how this folds kind of um, more of a triangle? If you add more creases here on the spine, that'll give it more room to fold square, like a regular book. Um, so again, that part's up to you if you want to do it that way. Um, I think I might on this one. I didn't on the Halloween one, but I ended up bending the, the, this part anyway. So maybe I will. I think another half inch. Yeah, I think another half inch will work. The spine is an inch and a half, and now this is an inch and an eighth. I think we might go for an inch and a quarter, for symmetry's sake, because I have issues with that. Alright, and then that gives us a lot of bending room on the spine, or on the flap. Now you can cover this part if you want to make it stronger, which I highly advise. The other one I did with duct tape, so that one's not going anywhere. Um, even just adding another sheet of paper to it will give it some strength. Um, just remember you're going to have to do all this bending again once you get the paper on there. Um, and it will be much harder because it will be two layers of paper instead of just the one. Alright, so there's your base. Your cover, if you want to call it that with enough room to breathe. See? Uh, you can't really see. Oh, yeah, so see, it's got enough room to get a whole bunch of junk in there. Um, the other parts that you'll have to tie down with little strips like these would be this pocket. Uh, so you do two. Oops. You do two down here, or if you want to make it one step. You can do one over the whole thing, leave it as is, and then you just have this space to work with under here. Or you can do, you can cut it here, uh, and then you have the whole space to work with. I personally usually do just the one and then uh, double-sided tape 
on the ends, or glue on the ends, and maybe a strip in the middle if I want to do two tags here. Um, you do very small tags and you just stuff them up under there. Um, this pocket, I think I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter. I think I'm going to cut a half inch off of here. That way you got a little bit of room for your tags to stick out. No, you got room for them to stick out up here. That's okay. Never mind. Alright, so then I need to just make two more uh, hinge strips like these for here. I'm not going to do that just yet because I want to mat this back piece first. I like to mat it first and then I like to mat this under piece first before I put this down. So, mat that, put little strips down, mat this, glue this down. And then you have just a pocket here and two little tag pockets here. And then we'll go back and deal with the rest of this later. Had I thought of it ahead of time, I could have matted this part first, too, but I didn't. I haven't even decided what paper's going inside and outside and anything. Um, next, we need to make the file pages, which go on the spine, and the hinge for the spine as well. So we'll set this aside here. Now, remember, I set that to my right if I forget where I did, what I did with it. for the pages. Now, in the original book, which was from, um, oh, what was her name? Kasha Designs. Uh, she did straight, like instead of having three different tabs here, she had just straight pockets, I believe, or straight tabs all the way across. Um, and then I think it was the paper addiction lady that made them into tabs, uh, three different size tabs. Mine were done just like a regular file folder, so you have a tab on this side, a tab in the middle, and then a tab on this side. You really can do it whichever way you want. I think I'm going to do it this way this time. That's a little neater. Um, and I already did it the other way, so why not, right? <laughs> All right. So, each page is cut at. Uh, it takes two parts which are cut at six and a half by nine and an eighth and six and a half by nine and three eighths. Um, the page is folded in an accordion style so there's a pocket in the middle and a flat piece on the side. Um, so what I did was I measured out this side and I measured out this side and made a flap where they connect. That way it's, you know, a little easier to figure it out, basically. Um, the six and a half is the height. The nine and an eighth and nine and three eighths are the width. Uh, we'll cut those, and then from there I'll tell you where to score them. Let's see. Five and a half. So... There's at least three pages in here because we're going to need them. So there's five. So assuming I haven't used it. Oh, well, there's four, so I have used it. And I thought he cut. Okay. So. We need, we're going to have to do one of them in red, maybe, because there's not enough green. Or we can do all three of them in red and do the, the signatures, the pages, the straight flat pages in um, green. I think that'll be the easier bet, because <sighs> then I don't have to decide, pretty much. <laughs> I 
need three at six and a half by nine and an eighth. Um, I don't generally cut them more than one page at a time because I they get loose and cut weird. And it's always a bummer when you waste paper. So six and a half. And don't throw out the cutoffs that you make on these because you can use them for tags. So that's six and a half by nine and an eighth. There's three of the first side. And now I'm going to make three of the second side. And that is six and a half by nine and three eighths. And set those aside as well. are all the scraps that I said don't get rid of. Keep those for later. Alright, set that aside. And we'll take the shorter pieces, the first ones we cut, and we'll score those first. They get scored at 4 and 5 sixteenths. You can't do sixteenths on here. That's a bummer. Hmm. I forgot this only does eight, so give me a second to do that math. See how I can adjust it. I know how I can adjust it, so I'm going to do four and a half, because that would be, uh, not four and a half, four and a quarter, which will be four and four sixteenths. And then this one would be, should be, four and a quarter as well. that four or eight and five eighths would be the next one to give you a half inch strip on the end. Alright, I'm going to do one page fully first because I need to make sure that that math is correct. So the first one would be hmm. Alright, I 
know what I'm going to do. Let me change that on here real quick because it'll confuse me otherwise. So four and a quarter. I mean, five eighths still. And then this one here would be at four and one quarter. Oh, shoot. in the wrong place. Alright. Alright, right. okay. back to these little sides. Lord, that was more trouble than it was the rest. I, n I didn't notice that in the first place, I don't know. Alright, so four and a quarter and eight and five eighths. Set it aside. Square four and a quarter. Eight and five eighths. Not eight and a half. Eight and five eighths. <laughs> Lord. And then the big one, you're just going to score it four and a quarter. Only. Okay? And there will be three of each. These need to be attached by this little this little flap right here that we just made with the score. I hope you guys can see that. I can't really tell from here. Um, so you have a score here, and you have a score on the end. Okay, that's your attachment point. So when you do this. You're going to attach this at the four and a quarter side. So on here you have a four and a quarter side and a five and an eighth it looks like side. So when you do that, you're going to attach these two via the flap. Okay? Now I'm just going to add some uh, double sided tape to that and I'll show you. I have an even half inch tape, so I'm going to use what I got. Quarter inch tape. Because that's all I have. You can do quarter inch and eighth inch if you want. Quarter inch, quarter inch. If you want to cut off the edge, because it'll run over the edge a little. It's up to you. Anything works. I'm going pretty close to the fold but not on the crease. And this little dingus is a stencil of a teddy bear that I got at a baby shower a million years ago. I think my sister Crystal's baby shower three years ago. Or maybe it was Nona's baby shower, I don't know. My niece Nona. flat edge, so I use it to rip my tape. I couldn't do it with my nails if I wanted to at this point. And I'm going to rub out some of this accidental score here that doesn't belong as best I can. Only, I guess you can do this really good with the um, Teflon bone folders, but I do not own one of them as of this point. Maybe someday. Um, but it does, it helps a little. I mean, it makes it a little less obvious, in my opinion. Alright, so, from here we got to notch the edges just a smidge, so they don't stick out and get in the way, so we can cover them easy. Let's go. 
garbage. It's stuck to my hand. And then take this. Line it up with the fold as best you can. Feel like the tape. If you can't, like if you're like me and don't have any nails right now, you can always um, use your exacto knife or a pokey tool if you have one, which I do have one. I just I haven't quite figured out how to use it that way yet. All right, so from there you'll have this. You're gonna fold both of these flaps forward. This one needs to be adjusted a little bit because it's supposed to be a sixteenth of an inch. You want your back ends to line up as best you can because they're going to go on a hinge. Uh, Kathy Orta's um, hidden hinge or whatever she calls it. Something to that effect is what they used in both of them. So that needs to be, like I said, just adjusted up a hair so that they line up. So that is what you have. It's a book. One, two, three. Now, after you adhere this into the hinge, you'll glue this bottom part here shut, and that'll make a pocket. You can also use a hinge like I did on the other pocket to close the bottom if you want to. Um, you could use a decorative punch and make a strip that's, say, two inches wide rather than one inch wide and just do a decorative edge on it and glue that down, and that'll hold the pocket shut, but it'll also give you somewhere to stick stuff into. So that would have to wait until after you get the pattern paper on here. So you're going to make the other two of these, and then we'll make the hinge, and I'll show you how to get them in there. All right. That, that these edges line up good, so you'll have to push this forward some. If you have very sore fingers like I do, you can absolutely use your burnishing tool. Just make sure that you get it in the right. Oh, be careful not to rip the paper <laughs> like I just did. Um, thankfully, this is going to be taped down, so it doesn't make much of a difference. But you got to be careful. Put it back in things, Sam. Jeez. Can't take me anywhere. See, so yeah, I ripped it right there. Uh, that's totally fixable. No big deal. Whatever. At least it's on the hinge side, so it's salvageable. Hold on. My papers are being unruly here. Not staying where I put them. Alright, last one. to cut my fingernails. What are we at here? 33 minutes, it looks like. Half of it spent trying to get the paper off the backing. Or the backing off the tape, I mean. See this. Alright, go forward. Forward. If you press it down with your finger first, your finger, not your nail, you press it down with your finger first and then run the bone folder over. It doesn't rip as easy. Alright, so now you have three with exactly the same tab. What the lady in the, I don't know if it was the first book or the second book did, was she notched it 
here on the first one and then notched it here on the second one and then left the back one long um, and rounded all the corners. That way it looks kind of kind of like fo a folio um, filing folder, uh, but not exactly. So what I'm going to use to do that is this, which is a, an envelope punch board from We Are Member Keepers. Um, so this one here, all we need to do is round the corners, which just stick them in the back side. Um, or if you have, you know, something like this that, that does corners, you can use that. Or if you have the um, We Are Memory Keepers punches there, or uh, crocodile corner chopper things, you can use those too. They work. I don't have the rounded corner one for that, so I just do it this way or with the other thing. Alright, so this one here is going to be the longer of the two. So what you're going to do is, we'll say about two-thirds of the way down. Uh, this is six and a half, which would make that something in an eighth. Oops. Yeah, there you go. Alright, well that abruptly cut off, and uh, I missed noticing it, so I ended up finishing the matching the edges without me without showing you what I did. A at any rate, I used the memory we are memory keepers envelope punch board to do the notched edge. Oh, which way I go here? See that notched edge like that on both ends of the long one. A third of the way in from the right on this one. And then that end. And then this is the front one which is two thirds of the way up. And then that end. So that makes them just slightly offset, gives them a file folder feel without actually having them be file folders. So that is done. So we'll set that aside with the book cover. And those will fit in there perfectly when we get to that point. Next we need to do the hinge part to hold the pages in. Uh, the pages are set a quarter of an inch apart. That way you've got a little bit of room to add tags and, um, you know, whatever all else you can think of to do to them. Uh, I am going to do the hinge in green so it won't stand out so badly. Using scraps from earlier on. For the hinge part, you need... cut a piece of cardstock at six and a quarter by seven. Which means these aren't gonna work, right? Two, three, four, five, three quarters. No. No, of course not. Hold on just a second. Alright. So that was my honey. Let me know he made it back to work fine. He had somewhere to run during work in my car. So, you know, it's a little bit of a panic thing and asked him to notify me when he got where he was going and back. So, I did. Or he did. Alright, so we're going to need both the scoreboard and the cutter. So we'll just get both of those right off the bat. The envelope punch board away. So the cutter needs to be, or the cut needs to be six and a quarter by seven. So six and a quarter by seven inches long. This is to make the hinge binding, which will be a hidden hinge because of the way the pages are going to be put in. Ooh, that don't look right. We'll see. Well, it's only three hinges, so yeah, I guess it should be. Alright, first one is at one and a half. First one is at one and a quarter. One and a half. Two. 
two and a half. Skip a quarter. Or uh, two and three quarters, anyway. Three and a quarter. Three and three quarters. Four. That gives you one, two. Then you go four and a half. Five. Five and a quarter. So there's your three hinges and your four gussets. The gussets are at a quarter inch each. Nail. It's not right, see? It actually is too long, ironically. So that's one. Okay. It's only off by a quarter. I'm just going to leave it. It does not make a difference. It's going to be hidden, covered. Um, the reason for the length on either side is because when you fold it around uh, the sides of the book, you want it to hold it in place. So, first fold is up. Second fold is up. Come on. Third fold is down. Fourth fold is up. This fold is up. Sixth fold is down. Seventh and eighth are up. Seven. Eight. Nine is down. Ten. And eleven are up. And that makes three peaks and four valleys with the edges. Like that. And these are going to be glued. These are going to be glued together. The peaks are going to be glued together, that is, to make three hinges. One, two, three. Hope you can see that. So, you lay it back down. You go to the back side of it, which, if your valleys are up, that's the front side. If your valleys are down, that's the back side. <coughs> Let me try that again. If your mountains are up, your hinges are sticking upright. That's your front side. If they're indented, that's your back side. Alright, so on one side of each of the mountains, you're going to place a piece of adhesive. Um, you can use glue if you want to, that's up to you. All the way on the end. And tear it off, or cut it off, whatever works. And you're only going to do that on one side of each. And you don't want to put it all the way up to the top or not all the way to the bottom necessarily. You want it kind of in the middle. Um, unless you have a piece of tape that fits really good into that space, which mine is a little bit skinny for it. Um, if you did go all the way to one end or the other, it's okay, but it adds more bulk to the, to the top of the peak. And if you do it too far to the end, then there's nothing in the peak. And if it gets cut or ripped or whatever, it's going to snag on everything you put in your pocket. Because these are going to basically be the sides of the pockets. So you want to be cognizant of that. <coughs> All right. Done. And then when you fold these over, you're going to match it up on the lines like this. So, they match up as best you can get them right there. You don't want them to overhang each other or anything goofy like that because it won't lay flat when you put it down into the book. Right, let's try this pokey tool. See if I can do any better with it. Hey, look at that. Like I 
said there's only three peaks. Because there's only three pages that need hinges. Like that. Okay. And then you just work them both directions a little bit to loosen them up so they bend easier. Like that. On the back side, the part you were just done, you're going to get some big fat tape and line the whole entire thing with it. Um, you can go this way if you want, or this way if you want, whichever. I just go the long way because it's easier for me. Um, this will make it extremely secure. Now again, you can use glue if you want for this function. Um, if you do, then don't worry about that right now because you don't need it yet. You only need it when you actually get to putting this in there. Um, wet adhesive actually works really good if you have like a quick dry type of thing. Uh, you know, not everybody's comfortable with the glue. They feel it's messy or whatever. Who cares? Mess is good. <laughs> yeah, so if you don't like the mess, you know, maybe crafting isn't quite for you. <laughs> But glue, um, assuming you got an archival glue, actually glue in some cases could be a better decision of something to use. Because uh, tape over time eventually, in theory, will dry out and peel and come apart. No. Do I know this for a fact? No. I haven't been doing this long enough for anything to have had time to dry out and fall apart. <laughs> um, but I know from old books that have been repaired with tape and stuff like that that they do. They fall apart. Um, they just don't stay together forever. So I don't know that that was archival glue that they were fixed with, but or archival tape, I mean, they, they were fixed with, but uh, it definitely doesn't last as long as an actual wet glue or a book making, book binding glue, which would be, uh, I believe, PVA glue is the book binding glue that you use. I always use uh, Aileen's Tacky Glue for the binding on my books, but to each his own. So. I'm doing a terrible job with this tape today. Can't get it on straight to save my life. Not usually my issue. Alright. And I got a little bit of a gap, which I'm just going to use a smaller tape for. tape with the white inside on the roll is a generic double stick tape from Tupelo Designs LLC on Etsy. They actually are opening their own web store on their own site in January as far as I know, uh, which will be pretty darn cool. This one here, which has the brown inside, is uh, Miracle Tape from Viva Las Vegas Stamps. It's very good stuff. Uh, the Double stick tape is very good stuff as well. I've had no problems with it so far. And I've been using it for a little while now. A couple few months. So I'm just going to smooth down all that tape and make sure it's well stuck. Um, ooh, that hurt. I stabbed myself with the corner of the thing. Sheesh. At any rate, uh, you just want to make sure it's really well stuck down. Anytime you're using an aggressive tape like these, you have to rub it down to make it stick good. So next, you're going to add adhesive to the fins um, on both sides. Again, not all the way to the top and not all the way to the bottom. Um, pretty close to the center on this case because you want it to uh, hold, hold the pages in place but not necessarily stick off the edge and get in the way of, you know, whatever you're going to stick in the pockets either. Because this is making a pocket by doing this. So I leave about somewhere between an eighth and a sixteenth of an inch um, gap between the 
top of the thing and the top of the tape. So. Not an exact science by any means. Don't worry about pieces hanging off the edge or whatever because you're just going to cut the edges anyway. It does not matter. Start a little bit off the edge. Right, make sure we're still recording there. I'm thinking about doing a vlog, a video vlog. Um, that would involve showing my bald self on TV, or on video, anyway, so I don't know how I feel about that, but if anybody thinks it's an interesting thing to try, let me know if I should. I don't know if I have enough stuff to talk about, though I'm sure I could find stuff. <laughs> I don't know for that matter if it would actually be craft-related or not. If, uh many more interests than just crafts. <coughs> I'm just snatching the edges again so that when you make the pockets they don't uh, stick up past the pockets or get in the way and you know prevent you from being able to get your tags in or whatever. Alright, so this is your hinge with my excessively long side, which, now that I look at it, I really want to cut it off because it's annoying me. Alright, I am going to, with the ruler and the side too. Before you put these into the book, you want to also notch these edges, stopping at the quarter inch gusset, or starting at the quarter inch gusset, whichever direction you're using it. And just give them a slight angle, you know, not even a 45 degree angle. Keep it neat, because they don't show, but they definitely leave an indentation on the paper they're under. Alright, so I'm going to stop here for now, and... I'll come back and I'll show you how to add this to the book, how to add the pages to this, and what you're doing as far as the uh, papers that are going between here. I haven't decided on what I'm doing with those yet, so that might be a little take a minute. So, all right, I'll see you next time.